In this video, I'm going to talk about seasonal pools at reservoirs. And the reservoirs that I'm referring to are reservoirs that are mainly fed by rainfall events, as opposed to a reservoir that gets a significant portion of their inflow from snowmelt events. Um, I don't want to equate those two, and I don't want to confuse those two. So for this video, just think of rainfall-based reservoirs. In a previous video, I had talked about the different zones that are found in reservoirs. And what we're concentrating on in this video is the top of conservation zone. It basically just separates your conservation pool from your flood pool. Now, when you have a seasonal pool, the top of conservation will vary throughout the year. That's why they call it a seasonal pool. And in this case, you can see that it tends to be lower during the, the spring months uh, in this particular example that I provide. One of the reasons for giving this video is that there's oftentimes this misconception, at least it's a misconception based on my experience, that these uh, the purpose of a seasonal pool is to draw it down before the wet season. Um, so if you do have that, that thought, then um, what you're thinking is that the original top of conservation would be shown by this red dash line. And you can see that it is constant throughout the year, but that somewhere along the way there was this thought that during the wet season, I want to draw it down, meaning that I want to borrow conservation storage for a flood control purpose. And you're really focusing on this time of the year that's shown by the arrow, right? And you're thinking that that's the time of the year that determines um, whether or not a conservation pool will go into effect. But in reality, and again, this is from my experience, um, a the more appropriate way to think about a seasonal pool is to think that the original top of conservation is shown down at this elevation, right, shown by the red dash line, and that you actually do focus on this time of year, right? And the thought is, is that I actually want to use some flood storage for a conservation purpose. And if I can catch some of the runoff towards the end of the rainy season, then I can extend those conservation supplies or try to make those uh, conservation uses or conservation supplies more reliable. So you might be thinking, well, why do some reservoirs have a seasonal pool and why are some flat? Well, if you understand this explanation or if you think about seasonal pools um, in this manner, then hopefully the question to this becomes a little bit more apparent. So there's a couple of tests that you have to go through before implementing a seasonal pool. <clears throat> One of them would be, is it economically feasible? So for instance, you may have a reservoir that only has, say, 10, 20% of the pool contracted, of the conservation pool contracted for water supply usage, right? So you, basically, you don't have a fully contracted conservation uh, pool. It's not being fully utilized. So in that case, it probably just not going to be economically beneficial uh, to then implement a seasonal pool, right? The supply or the people who are using it have a reliable enough uh, um, supply of water, right? Because it's not fully contracted. Um, so think about, you know, as a, you know, 20% contracted as opposed to being 100% contracted. So if it's 100% contracted, then, you um, a seasonal pool would probably make economic sense because it can make that water supply more reliable because it is being fully utilized at this point. Uh, the other point is that it has to be technically feasible. Now, I think that one of the things that does confuse people is that, you know, obviously we do have a lower um, conservation pool, a lower top of conservation during what would be the wet season, you know, so there is a tie in to the wet season. Um, for this, but you probably do have to have a very well-defined wet season in order to be able to implement a seasonal pool. And the reason I say that is because you are borrowing flood storage for a conservation purpose. So if you were to um, borrow that flood storage, then you're actually increasing your flood risk. So if you have a very well-defined wet season and you're not expecting to get these very significant events outside of the wet season, then from a technical perspective, it probably makes sense. But even if you have a well-defined wet season, but you do have 
a very high risk of having significant events occur outside of this wet season, or maybe you don't have a very well-defined wet season, then it might not be technically feasible because, again, you are increasing the flood risk, you know, and it just may not pass that technical feasibility test to raise this pool outside of, of the wet season. Or, like I said, maybe you don't have a wet season, or maybe you can still get significant events outside of that wet season. Um, there are other reasons. Maybe you have some sort of uh, environmental um, impact that, that would occur from having implementing a seasonal pool. So in that particular case, um, that would also fail one of the tests, and it would tell you that you can't implement a seasonal pool at that particular reservoir. So obviously, there's a lot of reservoirs, um, and one of the things that I always recommend is to um, you know, if, if a seasonal pool is being implemented at a reservoir, um, I try not to make assumptions about why it's being implemented. I actually try to go and find some information about that purpose. So, for instance, um, I found this online for Lake Texoma. And what this is showing is that the green line, and it appears to be at elevation 617 feet, that that's the original top of conservation. And here you can see that they actually do implement a seasonal pool. So in this case, it's actually below the original top of conservation pool. So in this case, then it's easy to think that, well, hey, that was drawn down below the original top of conservation zone. So um, maybe they are doing that for some sort of flood control purpose. And you can see here that's actually now above the um, original top of conservation at this point. But again, you always want to go to see, well, why was this seasonal pool implemented? And it says that Lake Texoma's seasonal pool plan allows for water levels to be fluctuated lower to encourage grain crop growth in the spring. So during this time, they're encouraging this grain crop growth. And then they raise it higher to then submerge those growths to provide habitat for waterfowl breeding and to provide cover for juvenile fish. So that gives you an explanation of why that seasonal pool was implemented at, at Lake Texoma. I also like to go in to see if, you know, from my assumptions that I have from my experience, just to see, can I find something, you know, that maybe goes against my assumption. And interestingly enough, from the Texas Water Development Board, um, it says some reservoirs have a flood pool that changes seasonally to provide additional capacity during rainy seasons. And so when I read that, it does seem to be um, um, different from what I had explained. It is, to me, does make it sound as though that they want to bring down um, uh, the top of conservation pool. They want to borrow conservation storage for um, a flood control purpose. Um, I'm not sure if this statement actually comes from um, an assumption that was made. Maybe it's just not worded quite the way that, that they wanted it to be worded. Um, but I also found here from the Texas Water Development Board, and this is with respect to Wright Patman Lake, um, that it says that to maximize the benefit of the lake beside the flood control function, the conservation pool is variably increased in summer and spring since it also supplies water to Texarkana an expanding city on the Texas Arkansas border, which, you know, that statement is somewhat in contrast to the previous statement that I read from the Texas Water Development Board. And it's consistent with my experience with seasonal pools. So um, hopefully this information was helpful. Hopefully it gets you thinking maybe a little bit differently about seasonal pools um, and maybe even thinking about some of the confusion that can be caused about by how things are, are worded. Um, with respect to, to seasonal pools and, and other topics and reservoir operations. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to find out when additional videos have been posted. Thanks.